Welcome to this introduction video to MapSewer, which is our cloud-based analytics application for predicting flows and sewers and is built using our meniscus analytics platform. The key benefits of this application are to predict hydraulic overload of assets, to reduce energy costs and to compare the performance of actual pumping assets with the predicted performance to help identify blockages. So this video sets the context for the subsequent series of videos where we are creating a fictional catchment in Derby and processing one year of historic rainfall data which is at five minute periodicity. So the other videos will show you how to create the subcatchments, these are polygons, to add pumping stations, uh, to then add the nodes which are the sewer connections within the, the catchment and obviously there will be more than that uh, in a live model. It also shows you how to create the sewer the, the network the sewer geometries so this is actually the connection from one node to another um, and again you can get as complicated as you want and also the flow geometries so how does one flow one node flow into another node or to another pumping station and then finally we show you how to add all the sewer uh, lengths diameters and um, slopes as well as the pumping station details such as the pumps themselves uh, capacities kilowatts ratings uh, and wet well sizes Please remember that within this application, we're, we're actually developing this on a live uh, development server. So it is processing real-time data all the time, as well as the this is real-time rainfall data all the time, as well as all the forecast data. We have 36 hour of for rainfall forecast being processed as well. And the, da the rainfall data goes back to uh, the 1st of January 2017. So whenever we see calculations being processed, what, was, what MAP is doing is processing real-time data as well as actually doing historic calculations back to, 2000, uh, to Jan 2017 as well. So I just put that into context for you. I'm, I'm not going to go into the operation of the rest of this UI. There are videos on MAP Rain which will tell you how to uh, get uh, access and view data for points and for uh, polygon geometries. So the next thing I just want to do is quickly give you an overview of the client. So this is our configuration tool. So it has some UI but it's not designed as that, it's a configuration tool. Um, so what you've got, we're showing here is the, the various geometry types. So we have pumping stations, we have uh, sewer nodes, and then we have um, sewer subcatchments. So I'm just going to quickly look at one of these for you for you just to give you an overview of what we're doing within this. So if you double click on that we have a whole load of graphs down the left hand side of the various metrics that we're calculating for every subcatchment. I'm just wanting to show you this. This is the, the, the um, permeable flow. So you can see here that we've got an average of about 82 uh, litres a second being shown, uh, being shown here. Now actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back up a level and I'm going to restrict this data through to the uh, just to July 2017, so it makes it a little bit easier to see. And just to the uh, 31st, 7, uh, 23.59. So if we go back into this now, we've got a slightly limited, more limited set of data, and clicking on this impermeable flow, we've got a maximum uh, flow here of 58 litres a second. So that's the maximum flow that we had under the conditions and the, the criteria that we've set within this subcatchment. So what I want to do is I'm just going to come back and I'm going to show you, to give you some sort of idea of processing within MAP. So we've got um, here, we've got an impermeable area which is driving a lot of that impermeable flow of 0.128 kilometers. Uh, square kilometers. I'm just going to change that to 0.4. So we can change any of these parameters that you within uh, map. They're all configurable and all can be changed within the UI. So what we're going to be looking at is actually seeing that, that we'll see that this jump in a minute when it recalculates and you'll probably see the flow graph jump. But just briefly what we've got here, this is the API. So this is the 30-day API calculation. This is a five-minute APIE calculation. So we use this to give us much better representation in the calculation of APIE as we process through the calculations on a five-minute by uh, interval the average rainfall falling into the catchment uh, and then the cumulative rainfall this is the uh, this this is takes off any initial losses um, for each of the rain events uh, we've got dry weather flow and then we've got the total flow to the catchment uh, as well which is the sum of the dry weather flow the impermeable flow and the permeable flow 
Uh, so we're just waiting for that permeable flow to calculate. Um, we've got permeable storage, which is a representation of what we think is stored within the catchment from the permeable flow. And then we also have the uh, rain event uh, return periods as well. So that's that's calculating. Um, so what we can just see, actually, it didn't we didn't quite see a jump, but you can now just see that the that the max has now gone to 183. So we've gone from a, a flow of uh, um, 58 liters a second to 183 liters a second. So bear in mind that's just a process. The whole of that that that's this obviously is a very small catchment, but um, for over a year's worth of rainfall data as well as processing all the real time data as well. So I hope you, this gives you just a very quick overview of what we're looking to achieve in the next series of videos when we're creating and building this sub this um, catchment. Um, so please look at the other videos and uh, come back to us if you have any questions. Thank you. Goodbye.